Badger Army. Welcome to this week's Beano Review. I hope you're all well, guys, and welcome. Yes, today we're going to be talking about issue 4091 with the return of Ball Boy. And seeing as though he's the main character, wouldn't it have been great to have him on the front cover? Come on, guys, you missed a step there. I know, obviously, the modern generation might not have heard of Ball Boy, but it would have been nice to have him on the front cover. But we do have the regular mischievous bunch. But it would have been great, wouldn't it? Obviously, he's in here, so it's a casual nod to the old school fans that he's back. But come on, it's about him. The whole story's about him. He should have been on there. I think that was a bit of a, um, a silly oversight there. Right, here we go. But yeah, it's football Beano style. There you go. <laughs> and of course, you've got uh, the boss of the of the comic this week, Martha from Cambridge, which is very cool. And uh, she's up to mischief with Minnie the Minx. And they think it's all over. It is now, indeed. Yeah. So poor old ball boy has lost his mojo. Will he be able to get it back? Who knows? And it's all about his adventures around with all the other characters, reintroducing him, I guess, into the universe. Not that he's gone anywhere, but you know, it's all about the bad things that happened to him and how Minnie and the gang seem to try and get him back into shape. And I think that's fun. Uh, you've got a <laughs> Roger the Dodger, who's definitely obsessed with electronics there. Not really with it this week. Um, you know, after being the poster boy for the past two weeks carrying the comic, pretty much. But there you go, he's tired. Yeah. And then Roger does a rather excellent footy uh, header there, which is quite good. And uh, yeah, he's so obsessed with his phone this week, it's untrue. Oh, but it's insane. Now, where was I indeed? Now, you've got a fantastic spot the balls, which I think is great. You've got a nice little nod to some old school stuff there. I don't know if you can see, but it's Beano Town versus Dandy Town uh, Slapstick Cup Final, which I think is fantastic. Uh, foot Night, so it's obviously a bit of a crossover with football and foot Fortnite. Uh, you've got Toxic Sock Contamination, which I think is great. Um, VAR Simulator, I don't really get that joke, but I suppose you have to be into football for that. Um, You've got like variously gross things going on here and it is great to have him back in it. Penalty spot cream, spot cream, gaffer, beano, hair dryer. <laughs> and I think there's lots of little in jokes in here as well. I'm going to have to have a proper look. But yeah, there's a, a, an old beano there as well, which perhaps does that mean that the conspiracies are real? Does that mean that people actually realise that they're in a comic book? Who knows? Very interesting when you think about that. Uh, you've got Ha Ha's Joke Shop, meet Beano Town's funniest family, with some silly shenanigans about, uh, you know, pulling a customer's nose. Why would you do such a thing? <laughs> you know, come on. And, uh, and dressing up as an old man. Uh, which I think is rather bizarre. Uh, but yeah, very funny there. Uh, you know, and I continually love the art style as well. Shannon Gallant has done some great art this week. I think that's fantastic there. Um, the Prank Academy one uh, was all right. You know, I think that's quite funny. If you could sort of play along and eat marshmallows all the time, I think that'd be great. Um, what might be fun is if you do it so... Uh, it wasn't on a real tree, I think. And then maybe you could sort of make out that it grew not on a real tree. Because, you know, I don't know about you, but I don't really want to eat marshmallows off a tree. And if I put them on something else and say, oh, the marshmallows grew overnight, I can literally just pick them off and eat them. I don't really want to eat them, I don't really want to eat them off a real tree, though. But you know what I mean? But I love the prank, and I think it's a great idea, but... Uh, Nom nom wise is a bit of a no no for me. Um, now, here you go, which I think is fantastic. Now, this is the best strip of the week, I think. Outside of the special ball boy, 
reintroduction storyline, I think this is great because, you know, you can't beat a good Beano Town adventure. So that's why I love the fact uh, that they've brought Bull Boy back in. And it's a three-parter, which I think is great. But this week's um, <laughs> outstanding strip, aside from that, is definitely Banana Man, where Caveman Banana Man comes in. And I love it when they mix up the character and change it up. Now, some superheroes just don't need changing up every week and different things. But I think it's great that they're finally exploring Banana Man's potential and doing all different things like this, like uh, giving him special costumes, making him the dark banana from time to time, and all these different things. I think it's really great when they change it up. Um, but you know, Spider-Man can get a new suit, Batman can get a mech suit to fight Predator, so why can't Banana Man become prehistoric Banana Man? Look at that, it's fantastic. You know, it's just hilarious. Chief O'Reilly's there, You've got General Blight, and he is literally going caveman Hulk style on General Blight with a good old punch there. And then he's so tired he has to sleep it off. <laughs> but yeah, guys, don't eat prehistoric bananas. <laughs> but yeah, that's fun. Now, of course, you've got uh, the loot, which I recommend going in for. Calamity James this week, always funny. The poor sausage. But yeah, it's just one of these things where he's obviously ordered the biggest ice cream going. Now, the, this is where I love the this side of Beano and of course Calamity James. So that's sausage ice cream with real sausages. You've got uh, jelly babies, M&M's and M&M's. M&M's. <laughs> Chop chip, cheese and onion crisp flavour. There's a part of me that wants to try that. Uh, Choco Chip 98, not 99. <laughs> and Turnip and Sprout. So look, those are hilarious. Look at those. Now, that is fun. And of course, you've got Cherry Ice Cream Party Bucket for 10. And I'm guessing he's gone for the massive, massive one that you could get there. And uh, obviously, all the silly shenanigans with seagulls at the seaside means that he ends up with the world's most toxic ice cream going because why not reasons with, mm, with mushrooms growing out of it and everything and then you know you've literally made a seagull pass out there from the gunge and uh, <laughs> I've become my own worst enemy oh dear so ice cream for jokes can't be a good ice cream joke what brand of ice cream do pigs like best? Hog and Days. What's Dracula's favourite ice cream flavour? Vain Ella. Ugh. Why does everyone invite ice cream to the party? It's so cool. When does ice cream cones carry an umbrella? When there's a chance of sprinkles. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Oh, here you go. Did you hear about the ice cream that went to the prison? They got their just desserts. Oh dear. <laughs> Angel face chasing after a bow and then getting themselves in quite a lot of trouble. Uh, an advert for Kitty Quest, which I think is pretty good. I'm definitely gonna check that out actually. If you like Captain Underpants at that, it's worth it. So once again, we see Dennis. Uh, we've got Ball Boy. We've got Minnie the Minx. We've got Nasha. All the guys in there, which I think is great. A Beano Town adventure. And there's Dennis trying to kick the ball with the Bash Street kids and getting involved. And somehow there's like an escaped crocodile and all sorts of random stuff. And of course, this bit's fantastic. You've got Ball Boy doing a laser Resident Evil style quest there. Look at all that stuff going on to try and get his mojo back. And I think that's fantastic. You know, it's really over the top. And, you know, if only real football players had to do that. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but, yeah, you've got uh, the Bash Street kids playing golf and getting up to mischief there, which is insane. The fight breaks out. Oh, that's mad. Oh, dear. But, yeah, and also you've got Miss Mysteries Art Challenge. There you go, where you can do a nice football kit. 
Uh, which team would you draw? I want to know in the comments. Indeed, I would love to draw an amalgamation of the Scottish and the English uh, team's drawings. I think that'd be great. Now, once again, the art in Ruby is fantastic. Screw Top Science, the artwork for this particular strip is fantastic. You know, just like the little details I think they put in there is great. But yeah, that's all about the hottest chili and uh, if they're gonna ever eat the hottest chili and stuff like that and they've made it scientifically GM insanely grown and all that sort of stuff. Uh, it's insane. Extremely volatile. <laughs> so that was great. Um, Quick advert for the Beano website, which is pretty fun. I've been on there a few times. But there you go. Betty the Yeti is always on form, isn't it? Indeed. Spamazon. <laughs> oh, Spamazon. Oh, no. See it? Oh. Oh, no. Betty and Yeti's. <laughs> unicorn uh, oh no the unicorn broke oh no look at that so the scooter unicorn broke that's terrible oh dear and you've got a nice little scooter word search there which I think is great I'll be doing some of that with Badger Junior at some point yes I think that's fantastic oh dear but yeah the Beano Town Adventure stuff is great and it's a real nice time to see Bull Boy back in action, you know, it's been a bit too long. I remember when they did Bull Boy and it had real football players in and he would interact with the real football players, uh, but that was donkey's years ago, you know. So hopefully that is uh, definitely a thing. But yeah, I think it's great that they've done these uh, special comics. But yeah, Bull Boy finally gets his mojo back. Finally, finally, which I think is great, you know, and uh, but it does take a bit of time. You've got, of course, everyone's favourite uh, Beano excerpts there, which I think is fantastic. But yeah, it's really good that they brought back, um, they think it's all over. It is now, Beano Town Adventure. He finally gets his mojo back, finally discovers that, of course, he was wearing his shoes on the wrong foot. And... Uh, you know, it's really great the way they've done that. They've reintroduced a lot of the new characters and they've all met Ball Boy quite nicely and I think it's great. And it'd be good if they keep um, that going for at least a while longer and not just for this special uh, football season. You know, it'd be nice if they bring Ball Boy back for a while, you know. Indeed. And something I've been looking forward to that's unusual now, by the looks of it, I'm not too sure if this is the first time he's ever been on the front cover or not, I'm not sure. But you've got Dan on the front cover, hopefully for next week. <clears throat> and he'll be doing a sort of a supervillain. Has Beano Town's top spy gone bad? <laughs> Double Agent Dan, Dangerous Dan, Big Boss. Only in Beano 4092. Ow. That is going to be insane, isn't it? That is going to be insane. So yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. I really am. Indeed, yeah. So you've got Editor-in-Chief Alexandra Turner, Editor John Turson, Production Editor Michelle O'Donnell, uh, Content Editor Claire Bartlett, and Content Producer Grace Belfour Harley. Design Editor Leon Strachan, and Graphic Designers Gary Atchinson, Mark McMail, and Ellen Skinner. Nice. But yeah, I'm looking forward to next week's one, Dangerous Dan, and it's great to see Ball Boy come back after all this time. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's Beano review. We've had some really fun times with this one, and there's even a drone with a football boot on. It's mad. So let me know what you thought of this week's issue of It's Beano. It's football style indeed, yeah. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. Bye!